Hello and welcome. In this lecture video, I'll continue to give an overview of corporations and we'll talk about the basics of capital stock. And then we'll also do some quick check problems, okay? So I'm on page 319 of your course pack. And so when we talk about stock, we're talking about shares issued to obtain capital. So this is one thing I wanted to comment on a little bit more. What do we mean by this? Well, let's say that a company needs capital. They need cash. A company needs cash to expand operations, maybe, uh, to build a new factory, to build a new corporate headquarters, to expand into a new market. Any kind of reasons that they need to do expansions or building new facilities or introducing a new product, they need cash to do this. And that cash is just called capital. They need capital to do this, okay? So how can they get that money? Well, they can issue debt. So they can issue bonds, okay? That would be issuing debt. Another way that they could do that is by issuing stock. So that's why companies issue stock. They issue stock so they get capital. And then that capital is basically cash and it allows them to expand operations, build new factories, create new products, whatever they want to do with that cash, okay? So that's why companies issue stock. That's why we're having this conversation right now, okay? So issuing stock is done to receive capital, cash for, oper cash for expanding operations, okay? So when we talk about some different basics here of capital stock, we, we have some terms that we need to talk about. We have authorized stock. So authorized stock is the number of shares that a corporation's charter allows it to sell. And this is a really big number. You know, if you went on to Google and you wanted to see Amazon's charter and how many shares of stock they are authorized to sell, it's going to be a huge number, huge number. And so that typically the number of the shares of authorized stock typically exceeds the number of outstanding shares, which is how many shares of stock are owned by our shareholders. That's what we mean by outstanding shares by a really big amount. There's no journal entry for that, but it will also be disclosed. We can also, so when we talk about issuing stock, a corporation could sell stock directly to potential buyers. That's probably, that's more common with privately held corporations, but in terms of a publicly traded corporation, what will happen is that the corporation will pay an investment banker to issue the stock. So the corporation, the investment banker, such as Goldman Sachs, probably heard of Goldman Sachs before, they purchase the stock from the corporation and then they resell it to the public. Okay. So that's what we're saying right over here. It goes indirectly. They pay an investment banker to issue the stock. The investment banker issues the stock and then takes all the gains on the secondary market. So when the investment banker, such as Goldman Sachs, purchases the stock from the corporation, that's called the primary market. And then when they resell it to the public, that's on the secondary market. Okay. So that would be on the exchanges. So the market value of stock, stocks are traded on various stock markets. So you have the, the NICE is the New York Stock Exchange. Okay. The New York Stock Exchange right there. There are two classes of stock. We have common stock, which is what we'll talk about in the next lecture video. And so those authorized shares have the same rights and then they have the same characteristics. And then in a future lecture video, we'll talk about preferred stock. Okay. And we'll talk about the differences there. Some other vocabulary that we need to know is the, the idea of the par value of stock. This is a very low dollar amount. Okay. It's an arbitrary amount, but it's a very low dollar amount that's assigned to each share of stock when it's authorized. Okay. And what it is, it's the minimum legal capital. That's what I'm saying right over here. Okay. And it comes into factor when we do our journal entries to issue stock. Okay. That's really what we need to know about for this chapter with par value is that, it, and we'll see that in the next lecture video that when we issue stock at par or above par value, we need to know the par value. And so that comes into factor when we do our journal entries to issue stock. Okay. But it is the minimum legal capital. So it's the least amount of that the buyers of stock have to contribute to the corporation. Okay. 
and it also protects our creditors by requiring a minimum level of net assets. But again, it's it's a little bit of an antiquated concept, but it is used when we do our journal entries. Okay, so when we are issuing stock, and this is something we'll talk about more in the next lecture video when we talk about the specific journal entries. We can issue stock without a par value. That's probably not as common. Okay. And so that means there's no minimum legal capital. Okay. We can also issue stock, no stated value stock. So that's no par value stock that our directors assign a stated value. And then that stated value becomes the par value. Okay. And then when we talk about the statement of stockholders equity, that changes a little bit different, that changes compared to what we talked about back in chapter one, when we were talking about the statement of owner's equity. Now we're talking about our stockholders equity and we have two, we have two sections, paid in capital, which is the total amount of cash and other assets the corporation receives in exchange for stock. And then we also show our retained earnings. OK, so what is retained earnings? Well, take a step back and think about what this says. Retained. What does the word retained means? Kept. Earnings kept over time. That's what that's telling you, right? Retained earnings. Earnings kept over time. So retained earnings shows all of our net income and net losses over the life of the corporation. And if we distribute some of those to as dividends to stockholders, that reduces our retained earnings. OK, so it's our cumulative net income and net loss that is not distributed to our stockholders as dividends. So our net loss is net income over time of the corporation that are not distributed to our shareholders as dividends. OK, that is retained earnings. And if it gets confusing, just look at take a step back. What does retained means? Kept over time. Earnings, net income, net income over time, less our dividends. OK. All right. So what I want you to do now is to do these quick check problems here on page 321. And then at the top of page 322, go ahead and stop the lecture video and tackle those problems. And then we will review them together. OK, thanks. All right. Hello and welcome back. So looking at the first quick check, quick check problem, a corporation is a legal entity separate from its owners. Yes, that is true. OK. Corporations are subject to fewer regulations and laws than proprietorships and partnerships. No, that's false. They're subject to more. Buying stock in a corporation is attractive because stockholders are not liable. Yes. Stock is easily transferred. Yes. Corporation has unlimited life. Yes. And stockholders are not mutual agents. That is also correct. E, all of those is the correct answer. And then we look at the last one right over here. The board of directors for a corporation, they are not elected by the corporate registrar. Okay, hold on. Let me just let that, there we go. Now it's focused. Uh, they are not responsible for day-to-day -day operations of the business. That would be the uh, officers and managers within the corporation, the CEO, the CFO, the CIO, vice presidents, and so on and so forth, okay, and other managers. C, they do have the power to bind the corporation to contracts. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Okay. They do because they are managing the corporation. And D is the right answer. They are responsible for and have the final authority for managing corporate activities. So it stops at the board of directors. But remember the shareholders, as I showed you in the prior lecture video, the first lecture video for chapter 13, is that the shareholders get to vote in the board of directors. So the ultimate, ultimate authority is really with the shareholders. But they elect the board, and then the board says, okay, you know what, we're going to have the final authority for managing corporate activities because the shareholders elect us to, elected us to do so, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna stop this lecture video now, and then the le next lecture video will pick up here on common stock, okay? Thanks so much.